Hi, I'm continuing on my series called Waterloo Sunrise, where we look at the packets captured during the startup of a PC um, while it connects to a public network. And you'll find more background in the first of the series of videos. So just a quick reminder, we can get the trace file from the TribeLab site, simply uh, sign up to join the community, uh, log in, and you'll find it in the section called Network Trace Analysis. And here we have lots of lovely information. And right down the bottom, we see Waterloo Sunrise PCAP NG. So that's the trace file I'll be looking at today. This is more or less where we left off. We were looking at DHCP in the last session. And um, the next thing I'm going to look at is, I'm going to look at this packet here, Multicast Listener Report. But that's sort of linked to the following packet. So I'm going to start with packet number five. I have to confess that when I first looked at this packet, um, apart from the fact that it's IPv6 and I'm not terrifically familiar with IPv6, but um, the other thing is I don't know anything or I didn't know anything about the LLMNR protocol. So what I did was I flicked into Wikipedia, as you do, and I looked it up and here we have the details. And the important thing here is it says that it's a protocol based on the domain name system, which is the way that we resolve names to addresses. So the way that we resolve the name of a website, such as uh, tribelab.com to an actual IP address. Um, but in this case, it works on what they call local links. Now, what they mean by local link, in fact, is we can think of it as subnet. So this is a way of using a multicasting technique to resolve a name to an address. So let's have a quick look at this. We can see that this packet is coming from an IPv6 address um, because it, at this point it's using IPv6 with this particular protocol. Later on we'll see it uses v4 as well. But one of the things that puzzled me straight away was, bearing in mind that we haven't completed the DHCP sequence, how on earth do we already have an IP address, even if it is IPv6? Now the reason is that in IPv6 we have a link local address scheme. And this is a more or less a hard-coded address into the PC um, that is derived from the MAC address of the interface. And if we look at my IP config output, you'll see that we have link local IPv6 address. And this is the address that we're using in this particular packet. So that's how we have an IP address at this point before we've even completed our DHCP. Now, because it's derived from the MAC address and Ethernet MAC addresses are thought to be unique across the world, then uh, this should be a totally unique address. So there's no danger of it clashing with another device. Now, the next thing to notice is that this is being sent as an IPv6 multicast at an Ethernet level. And indeed, it's being sent out to a, a particular destination IP address. And if we go back to our description of um, LLMNR, we can see that this is quite normal behavior for IPv6, we send to this address. Um, to, uh, we send our queries to that address and we target them at UDP port 5355. So that all matches up, that's exactly what we're seeing. So let's have a look what we have in here. You can see that actually my PC is trying to resolve its own name to an address. So the question is, why on earth would I be sending a query for my own name? Now I remembered back in the days of NetBIOS name services, uh, when a PC first came onto a network, it would also do a query for its own name. And it did it to determine if anybody else was already using that name um, on the network. And I believe that's what's happening here. I haven't got any proof of it, but it seems like the uh, most likely explanation. So if we just filter based on the uh, 
And we're going to do this on the source address here. We're going to apply that as a filter. And I'm also going to specify the UDP port, which I believe is UDP dot port is 5355. And now we see all of these name queries. And you can see that it, it does this several times. Um, I remember in the NetBIOS name resolution days, I think it used to do it three times um, before it was happy that the name was unique on the network. Um, as I say, I can't explain all of this, but it's just, this all seems to be standard um, operation. The other thing to uh, check out is I said that I would look at the previous packet, packet number four. Now this is a packet that's um, actually trying to control the way we listen to multicasts and it's an announcement out onto the network to uh, say which multicast I'm, we're, we're actually going to listen for. And if we look in here, what we find is that at this point, we are excluding this particular multicast, which is to the LLMNR multicast address. And it seems that what we're trying to do here is mask out um, similar announcements from other devices while we're using this particular mechanism. Now that seemed like a good theory until I checked out what actually happened for the whole sequence of these packets. So let's, uh, sorry, let's get the address again. I'm going to add in this particular announcement, apply as a filter and selected. Now I have all of these announcements and so I have this peculiar sequence where we exclude the LLMNR address here. Um, this is excluding something else which looks to be our own address. And then we include the LLMNR multicast address. But then in this, the very next packet we exclude it again. And then we exclude some other stuff and now we're including the address again at 39 and then two packets later we exclude it. If we come right the way down to the bottom here you can see that the very last thing we do is exclude that multicast address which is seems to be indicating that our PC is no longer interested in listening to this type of address. Now I think it's because I don't really have full IPv6 support enabled on my Windows machine so that could explain why we have that. Now I said earlier that there were LLMNR um, packets flowing on IP version 4 as well. So let's go and have a look at those just to complete the story. So the way I'm going to find them quickly is I'm going to say I want to see everything that's uh, flowing to UDP port 5355. And so here we see an example of these packets. And uh, if you remember from the uh, video, the last video, this address 10101881816 is the address that was allocated to uh, my PC using DHCP. So what we'll also do is we'll also um, add that as a filter. So I'm just saying that I want to see everything going to UDP port 5355, but it also must have an IP address either in the uh, request or the response of 10.101.188.186. So we'll apply that. And here we see a couple of announcements. Um, the same type of thing if we look so it's the we can see here that we're again querying for uh, the name of my laptop so my my laptop's querying for its own name and it doesn't get a response so it tries again and it doesn't get a response to that attempt either then we've got some other name resolution attempts um, but we also have again further down we have uh, more 
attempts to resolve my laptop name to an address. We don't get a response to any of those multicasts. And so I think at that point, my PC assumes that the name is unique on the network. So that's it for LLMNR. Um, just to recap, what we've learned here is that LLMNR is a name resolution mechanism. It uses DNS formatted queries, so we can see the query here. But um, instead of being directed to an actual DNS server, it's multicast onto a subnetwork. And if any device has that name on the subnetwork, it should respond with um, a similar type of DNS style response stating the mapping between the name and the address. So it relies on all the other stations on the network to respond to these types of queries. So we'll leave it there and I'll see you next time.